space. So my interest in STEM came from just a kind of a natural aptitude and interest in biology from a very early age. And I would say a series of engaging teachers and mentors along my kind of academic journey from very early in school, just really enjoying biology and particularly human biology through to my undergraduate and PhD. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have an amazing PhD mentor, Dame Nancy Rothwell, who not just taught me kind of the fundamentals of research, but also how we think about applying science to delivering medicines. And it really kind of fostered this intrinsic interest in having an impact and how we use our learnings in biology to apply those to influence the patient outcomes and and help deliver medicines to patients. So I would say it was a natural interest in biology fostered by a series of mostly female, actually, but some very influential mentors and, and teachers along the way. I've experienced over the course of my career implicit and intrinsic bias that hopefully is diminishing over time. I mean, earlier in my career, for sure, I was in situations where there was clear biases around compensation disparity or promotional opportunities for women versus men in the workplace. And my approach to that has always been to respectfully put forward a a position to represent women as equal members of the working community and not let that be something that is allowed to pass unnoticed in those situations. But it's something I think, fortunately, I've seen less of over time and something that as a leader now that I actively advocate for equitable systems and processes in the workplace. But definitely there was numerous um, circumstances over the arc of my career where I did unfortunately observe definite disparity in, in the workplace with regard to gender and diversity. I would say some of the attributes that um, I think are important are always continue to learn and listen I did a mid-career MBA, which really helped pivot my career into the corporate kind of business side of the life science industry. I think recognising that there's always more to learn and that you're not, never assume you're the smartest person in the room is an important attribute to have as a leader, to listen to those around you. It takes a village and everything is accomplished by standing on the shoulders of others. So always remember that. And then people are your most valuable attribute and asset. So recognise talent, develop talent and help kind of raise everyone's game around you because the rising tide floats all boats. You should not do anything that compromises anybody else's ability to advance. I think there's always an opportunity for everyone to advance together. And so I'm a strong proponent of creating runways for other people to allow them to blossom. I think as you move up in the leadership ranks in our industry, there's still a dearth of female leaders. You know, I'm part of the CEO Sisterhood, which is an all-women's collective that has been formed. I think the system is pushing or creating more opportunities Earlier in the funnel, there's more young women graduating with STEM qualifications in STEM disciplines, which is great. And I would love to see that pulled through as they mature through their careers and take on those senior leadership roles as well. I would say that creating community in our industry is an important exercise for us all to kind of proactively do. It's been like an emerging practice you know there's institutions that have created like enormous impact through what they're doing like life science cares is a great example of how we can collectively come together to improve the sense of community and the impact we can have as an industry one of the things that i always find time to do is to have conversations with eager and enthusiastic and inquiring young students or young professionals who are interested in learning more about what's involved in in a career in the life science industry. And I think 
it can be an end of one that can have an impact by having those conversations and help people understand what the options are in in our industry and help inspire them to take the next step. It's very easy today to create your own community, to build networks, and I would encourage everybody who's starting off their career in this in the life science industry or in any STEM role is to start early and build your community of professionals in the space that interests you and use them, reach out to them, ask questions. You know, we all we all love what we do and we feel motivated and we feel like we're having an impact, you know, delivering medicines to patients and we'd love to see the next generation, help empower the next generation. So my advice to people is to build that network, build it early and continue to build it throughout your career. And that's something that is much easier today than it has been in years past, given all the platforms that we have available to us. The best advice I was ever given was to not worry too much about what you're not very good at and lean into your strengths and do what really energizes you. So for those women and girls out there who love STEM disciplines, who may feel constrained by any gender disparity or any any barrier to entry for a STEM profession, I would say don't let that be a defining factor in what you do. Lean into what you enjoy because you're going to be spending a significant portion of your life going forward thinking about it on a daily basis and spend some time to reflect on what those things are and why you enjoy them and craft a path forward that allows you to spend your working life doing the things that that you enjoy most, that you have a natural aptitude for and that really energise you. 